I'll yep. see it. Got, got it. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, welcome everyone. Uh, July 23rd, 2020, uh, the, the National Alumni League meeting on virtual online. Uh, today we have a, a great presentation by Daniel Neumeyer of the Space Center Houston. Uh, I'm Stokes McMillan, the program chairman of the, the National Alumni League. And uh, first of all, we have a message from our president, Phil McArthur. Hey, thanks, thanks, Stoke, Stokes, Stokes, um, and I do want to do want to thank uh, Stokes and uh, David uh, for uh, t taking the bull by the horns and uh, and allowing us, with so many people having to stay at home, allow the uh, the NASA Alumni League, our JSC chapter, to be able to actually uh, begin to at least virtually socialize. Um, so. And I get a big sense I'm about to preach to the choir because if you have enough interest and initiative to be tying in, I have a feeling you're current in your views and maybe have made a, an additional contribution. But if you have friends and other uh, now, uh, you know, other now members who are just sort of have just fallen into this, I'm stuck at home, there's nothing to do. Uh, two things. One is encourage them to, uh, uh, to tie into these virtual meetings and also share with them uh, a reminder that we really need member funds to do the things that the uh, now JSC does, in particular supporting STEM efforts in some of the local school districts in our area. And these are, under, these are generally underserved schools, schools that don't have the resources of a CCISD or, a, or, or an HISD or a Friendswood ISD. Um, and so the funding to do that comes out of uh, our views and contributions. So uh, please renew uh, when your membership is, uh, when your membership expires. Um, also please uh, consider adding a tax deductible contribution. And one thought, uh, things like this Zoom meeting, we can't do them for free. Um, you, we really need to, the, the now has a, a Zoom a subscription, which allows us uh, to have a larger, a large enough uh, number of people to participate. So anyhow, that's, uh, that's my, uh, I'll get off my soapbox now. That's my preaching to the choir. I do want to thank Daniel Neumeyer for joining us today. Thank you very much, Bill. I really appreciate it. Um, there's lots of lots of familiar faces there, so I'm I'm excited to give this presentation and tell you a little bit about what we've been doing since March. Uh, hey, Daniel, we are on. Oh. Daniel, I, I realized I, I I was talking, but I was on mute. Sorry about that. Oh, sorry, Stokes. Let me I think you're still on mute. Ah, good grief. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, I, now let me introduce you, tell you a little bit, tell people a little bit about your background. Uh, so it's my pleasure to introduce Daniel Neumeyer. He's the, the Vice President of Education with Space Center Houston. He is a seasoned educator with approximately 20 years combined in formal and informal education and 23 years of business leadership and project management experience. Daniel leads the nonprofit Space Center Houston's interactive educational programs. More than a quarter of a million educators and students from around the world go to the center annually. His academic experience includes serving as the Albert Einstein Distinguished Education Fellow in the Office of Education for NASA headquarters and the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. In that role, Daniel led the development and implementation of NASA Goddard missions, educational moment opportunities for STEM and informal student leadership forums for ninth through 12th grades. He also delivered educator professional development programs to Maryland master educators and an informal science lesson at the White House. 
Mr. Neumeyer was a secondary math and science teacher at Center Colorado School where he implemented uh, an award-winning scientific research and informal STEM program. And he holds a master's degree with uh, emphasis on leadership and space science from Regis University in Denver and, and a bachelor of science in business administration with an emphasis on entrepreneurship and, and international business from the University of Colorado in Boulder. And additionally, he has an associate of applied science in water well technology from Trinidad State University, uh, Junior College in Alamosa, Colorado. And now then, Daniel, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Daniel in my the new art. Thank you very much, Stokes. I appreciate that. And, you know, as we enter this time right now, I'm really glad I've got that, uh, that little fallback degree there. I can go drill water wells anywhere. So if if things get much worse here in the world, we can I can always get water. So that's a good thing. Um, so excited to have that. No, it's my it's my pleasure to be here with all of you and and to tell you about you know all the the innovation uh, that's happened during this challenging time at Space Center Houston. Uh, we we first of all want to say thank you to the NASA Alumni League and all of the members for your generous support of, of our programs at Space Center Houston. And you've, you've continually supported our programs that directly serve those students that are in greatest need. And it specifically gives them the opportunity to connect with space exploration. And, and I'm gonna tell you about a few of those programs as we go through here. Um, I basically split this up into, into kind of two sections of our presentation. Uh, it's going to be, first of all, what we've done to innovate while we were shut down. So basically a big pivot to virtual offerings and virtual opportunities. And then the second part of my presentation will be all about the reopening and, and kind of where we're headed now, what's going on now at Space Center. And then, you know, I'm happy to answer any questions, talk about opportunities to get engaged. Um, I also have some some pretty cool opportunities to share uh, if you know a few students around who, who are excited to, to participate in space exploration. So I first want to start with, you know, kind of echo what, what Bill was talking about and that support of our, our local school districts. Um, I put this up because I'm speaking not only as an educator and and as a, as a father of two children who are entering school now in this time, uh, also my wife is a fifth grade teacher. So, you know, we're in a, we're in a, you know, pretty stressful time to figure out who goes where and, you know, is everyone going to be safe? And, and I will tell you, even designing our programs for on site, I'm, I'm highly encouraging everyone to support your local school district leaders and teachers as much as you possibly can. Cause you know, a lot of the choices are, you have to choose one bad choice over another bad choice right now. So the more we can support them, the more you can help out, um, you know, the better it is for all of us in our community. So I wanna make sure we, we keep that forefront. Uh, and that's really the forefront Space Center Houston is taking as we enter, you know, the fall here and how we can be a strong community member and support the schools in the greater Houston area during this, you know, during this challenging time. So, you know, speaking of that, you know, we saw, we average usually about 100,000 students a year just in field trips. So that's just in students coming through our door every year. So we've made a big realization that that's not happening this year. So we're not, uh, we're not gonna have those students coming in of course, if our doors are open and they're able, we're, we're ready for it. But, you know, it's just the reality now. That's not going to happen. So we wanted to really position ourselves as that, local, as that partner. Like, how can we be a true part of the education ecosystem and to partner with schools, whether it's through virtual offerings, uh, maybe it is an on-site opportunity. Uh, we've got lots of different creative ideas to work with school districts. So. Um, we are, we're excited to be a partner and we've really taken this opportunity to innovate. 
But what that took was a major pivot to virtual learning. So Space Center Houston is such an extraordinary place to be. I mean, there's nothing... You know, there's nothing like standing next to the Saturn V rocket or being underneath the 747 shuttle carrier aircraft. Uh, and now standing right next to the new Falcon 9 exhibit and, and seeing, you know, these extraordinary artifacts. You know, getting to hear from folks like Bill MacArthur present, uh, you know, the exciting adventures in space exploration. So we we realized that students aren't going to have the opportunity to come as much. So we made the pivot, we made the turn and we started this uh, in March. And since then we've done some really extraordinary things as, as we pivot. And one thing I want to point out about this image is, is as we look at now, you know, it looks, it, it looks like the astronauts upside down, but those of you, you know, we're all, all engaged in space exploration and that's a very relative, it's a, it's a relative turn. So if we turn this picture the other direction, we orient it a different way, it can look normal to us. And the reason I'm not flipping the image yet, because it's not quite normal for us to do all this virtual learning, but we're headed that direction. And we're really looking at this as an exciting way to uh, make Space Center Houston better and engage more students in what we do, what, what happens at Johnson Space Center and it, at, at NASA you know, across the agency. So this is, this has really helped us bolster this program. So I'm going to start by going through some of those big changes that we made. Um, first of all, just basic digital resources. So we put several digital resources out there through our social media channels, uh, through our web, our app. So um, if you look right in the center, this part right here, this is the, the, the app. Uh, we've updated the app quite a bit. You can take virtual tours of the center on the app. Uh, we've also pivoted our thought leader series, which I know many of you have attended. Um, some of you have been part of it. And we've turned these, we, we've put these together as virtual offerings also. So we've got those, those opportunities going out to the public. Um, we've got a very uh, you know, a fantastic blog, and I encourage you to check out our blog session section on the website. Uh, we've got several history updates. We've got some fun little puzzles to do. We've got other kinds of information that you can access through the blog, and that's a great place to go. In addition, we're updating our website so that we have a specific resources page, and then coming soon, we'll have a specific uh, educators page uh, that's helping us serve the school districts as we as we go into fall this year. So we've got all these great resources, all these opportunities out there. Um, I encourage you to check check out the website. There have been quite a few changes to that. Um, and so this is one way we've been serving the community and our members is putting this digital, just in general, these digital assets and making them available. Um, and we, you know, we definitely have several sponsors who have stuck with us through this time. And, and so we definitely want to encourage folks to, to support them as they continue to support our education mission. Some of our virtual programs have been, uh, we did a couple virtual astronaut visits. So, you know, the challenge is one of our big programs has been the lunch with the astronaut. Um, and I think Bill's joining us in a, in a couple weeks to work on our, our astronaut presentations, we have, we are doing those on site. Uh, but two of them that we've done is we did one with uh, Dr. Leroy Chow and one with Dr. Tom Jones. These are out on the YouTube page, Space Center Houston YouTube page. So they are accessible to anyone who wants to, wants to view them. So we operate these as a live event. We record it, we do some editing, and we put it out for the public to enjoy you know, at their leisure at any time. One of the activities that I think I'm most proud of is the virtual campouts. So we had a very vibrant camp in program. We call it camp ins or camp outs. And that's an opportunity where students, it started with Boy Scouts, but Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Heritage Girls, families, 
Uh, we do a military camp out, have had the opportunity to come and spend the night at Space Center Houston. So whether they sleep next to the Apollo 17 capsule or they get to pitch their tent out under the, the shuttle carrier aircraft, uh, now the Falcon 9. Um, so one thing with, the, with this is we had, last year we had over 10,000 people spend the night at Space Center Houston. And you know that, that really has taken a hit now. So we took a big pivot to make this virtual. And you know, this was a challenge. How do you make such a hands-on experience a virtual experience? So the team got together and did, did some extraordinary work with this. And, and so what we did was we created the, the camp out, the virtual camp out program, where we have an astronaut, a retired astronaut as oh, kick, off our, kick off our experience. Uh, we encourage whoever this goes out to is this is a family experience. So you spend two to three hours together on a Friday or a Saturday night, you pitch your tent in your apartment or in your backyard. Um, it's been a great opportunity for kids to do something different. Uh, we, we hear from, we hear from our, our astronaut friends. We've had um, Nicole Stott recently, Dr. Robert Satcher has participated. Um, I think Colonel Duffy's participated, you know, several other folks in this. And, and we were doing these two times a month. So, uh, once every two weeks, and we offered them as a, a pay what you can model because part of this space center Houston still needs money. We need money to stay open uh, as a nonprofit and as a museum. Uh, they're, they're all, you know, we're all very challenged at, at this time. Um, but we didn't want to make a barrier. We didn't want any barriers for, for the community in, in going and participating in these. So we set it up as a pay as you can model. And we've had, you know, extraordinary attendance at these. We've had thousands and thousands of people have participated in our campouts. Um, we're going to continue having these campouts, the virtual campouts uh, throughout the remainder of this year. And they're probably going to go long into the future because it's really a great way for us to share this with, with the public. So we have the astronaut presentation. Then we move into two STEM activities that parents do with their students, with their, with their children. Um, and it's all activities you can do with found items at home. So this is, you don't have to go to the store. Um, you can build or design or do whatever you need to do there at home. And then we close each event with a planetarium show of some kind. So whether it's, you know, viewing the, mu the moon, looking at the different planets, uh, using some of our planetarium equipment that we have at Space Center Houston, we can broadcast that out during these events. And then we encourage families to, to download the, like the Stargazer app, which is a great app that you can put anywhere and you can see what's up in the sky, what should you be looking for. So even if you're locked in your apartment, you can still get a view of the sky through that app. Um, and one thing that's come out of this is we're able to uh, now customize these packages for groups. So we can do this for private groups. We can, uh, we've got a couple opportunities coming up where we will be doing that. They contract with us. We put the experience together and then they all participate together like in a Zoom meeting. So you can bring a whole group together and do these virtual campouts uh, with your with your organization, your families, you know, do it do it as a as a great way to connect and and work across, you know, across the boundaries that we have in front of us. So I'm very proud of these virtual campouts and I'll give you some dates when the next ones are. And feel free to sign up and participate. Like I said, it's a it's a pay what you can. You can pay nothing, or you could pay. We'd we'd be happy to accept thousands of dollars also. So that's just it's it's purely up to you. So we we put that opportunity out there. Um, here's some of the social media that comes in. So during these events, we have the the community that's watching as they're building and and exploring they send virtual pictures in and we share these pictures out during the event and it creates even more of a community. So you see what each other's doing and, 
and follow through on the activities that the, that the kids are going through at that time. So the next program I wanna talk about, and this is a, definitely a very wordy slide. Uh, this is a very, uh, a very important program for Space Center Houston. So our Girls STEM Pathway program um, encompasses kind of the education vision of Space Center Houston. So our primary goal is to get students on the STEM pathway and help them to never leave that pathway. Uh, the reason we use the term pathway is because you can jump on and off of a pathway at any time. And so if you didn't decide to join the pathway until you were a freshman in high school or you know, even a senior in high school, you can still get on. You may have to work a little harder you may have to do things a little different, but you can still be part of the, you know, the STEM journey. So I just want to quickly walk through what our Girl STEM Pathway is. Uh, this program we put together, um, we had a, you know, it, the, the program as it is designed now was done through various generous support from the Boeing Corporation. Uh, they've, they've supported us extraordinarily well given us the chance to put this together, build our capacity to live, to deliver this to, to students all throughout the Houston area. And then, you know, we're coming up on some future opportunities where uh, we can expand this into some other cities and other communities. So we're excited about that. Uh, so let me, let me walk you through this pathway and, and what we do in each of this. So the launch pad is what we call um, our Women of STEM Wednesdays. So this is the opportunity when we have elementary students come in and they get to hear from a female scientist engineer. Uh, they, they get to experience Space Center Houston, what that looks like. Uh, so we've had to pivot all of these to virtual experiences. So our Women of STEM Wednesdays, which will launch in the fall again, uh, are gonna be virtual experience for girls all throughout the Houston area greater Houston area to hear from, you know, extraordinary women scientist engineers. Our ignition phase, this is for our middle school students and this encompasses our Girl STEM Academy. The Girl STEM Academy has been going on for, uh, I think almost, I think about nine years now. It's been a, a, a big staple of Space Center Houston. Um, it's it's a five, basically the girls from specific schools that we partner with, come five times during a semester, work on a project over those, over those five weeks, have a culminating event, and learn all about space exploration. So for example, one of our latest ones was designing satellites, designing and building satellites. So these girls didn't just come and do crafts. They learned like the STK software that AGI puts out, which is the orbital mechanics software used to, to fly satellites. Um, so we're, we're, we're teaching them something, giving them the opportunity to learn something they just wouldn't normally get in the classroom, but it builds on why it's important to study and work hard in the classroom. So we have, uh, we did pivot our ignition phase to a virtual offering, and we did half of last, uh, last semester virtually half of it on site uh, and it went very well and we're excited to see how we can do these uh, do these both ways so the mission control phase of our pathway is our mentoring program so this is the this is what we're calling our uh, stem mentoring cafes so originally it's designed when we can go back to on site that uh, girls get to come, girls who have participated in some of the other programs with this, get to come to Space Center Houston, and we put them in a safe environment with uh, leaders from space exploration. And we put them in smaller groups so they can really get a mentoring experience and, and learn about how can they take, how can they have a career in STEM, you know, and, and specifically in space exploration. So this program, we successfully pivoted virtual. Uh, we had our first mentoring cafe. Uh, we were lucky enough to have Dr. Ellen Ochoa as our, as our first guest. And 
We've since done uh, three different mentoring opportunities. Uh, we do these virtually now, we do them through Zoom. And the, the key piece of this, uh, when you're running a mentoring program, is the safety of the students and the safety of the, uh, of the mentor. So we play that middle role where there's no direct, you know, direct communication between the student and, and the mentor, but we give them then the direct opportunity to communicate in a Zoom meeting. So we're not sharing email addresses and phone numbers. Um, now that can come later, but there's, there's parental approval and things like that for it. So this is a great way that we have, we have partnered with the aerospace community and students who really need to hear a little bit extra. So we're putting them in small groups uh, where it can be four and five girls in a Zoom room with, uh, with a mentor. And you know, you get to ask all those hard questions and talk about it. We don't record them, you know, we leave them. It's very, the whole plan is that it is a, uh, it's a great opportunity for these, um, for the girls to ask those questions and to figure out you know, how can they move that next step and move along here and get the support that's happening. So we have, I think we have seven more mentor cafes coming up this year and then we start a new round uh, in the spring. Uh, so that, that, that's an exciting piece. Then we move on to the liftoff page. So the liftoff section, this is our Space Center University Bridge Program. Um, and this is where I'm gonna give you all an opportunity uh, if you know any any girls in um, in that eighth to ninth grade age level, or you work with any school districts, you know of any folks, um, we have an opportunity, and we're actually doing this as a live event at Space Center Houston. And I'll talk to you a little more about what that looks like. So we are able to offer this program on site. Um, we originally um, had schools signed up and ready to go to it, but some of those, some of the kids can't come, um, obviously. So we've got a few openings and I definitely wanna share with you all if you know, if you know of any students who would fit, fit this role that we'd love to have them participate. But this is a program where they spend a week at Space Center Houston uh, going through science and engineering, basically the science and engineering of what goes on at Johnson Space Center. Uh, some of the cool events they get to do is they get to do whether it's water robotics, some students get to do scuba diving, so they get to train, train like the astronauts. Uh, they work with divers that, that, that work with the astronauts in the neutral buoyancy lab. Um, we don't get to go in the neutral buoyancy lab. We do this all at, at, a, at a private pool, but it's, it's an extraordinary experience. Um, and then the bridge part of this is we've added a whole level of guidance and counseling for the girls on how do you make that next step as you enter high school? What classes are you choosing? Are you advocating for yourself as a STEM learner? Are you gonna let a, a counselor or a teacher um, tell you you shouldn't take this route? Um, how do you advocate for yourself? How can you, how can you achieve that way? So that's a big focus of what we're looking at, building that that confidence and self-advocacy as they go forward. And then our on station, this is, this is a program we'll be doing virtually in the fall. And it's basically assisting students in the design of a scientific research program, a scientific research project. We do it in conjunction with the science fair schedule. So these projects could be very applicable to compete at science at a science fair. Uh, Dr. John Charles assists us with this program. Um, so we've got, you know, we've got some extraordinary opportunities in this to help students uh, do actual science that can compete at the highest level in, in science fairs and Olympiads out there. Um, this is a passion of mine. Uh, it's, it's something I did when I was in the classroom working with uh, students who, when I walked in, they were failing all the science tests. They, I was told by board members and um, administration of this school that these kids can't learn, they can't do science. Um, I saw 
I walked into the chemistry lab they put me in charge of and noticed it was full of old computer monitors. And at that point, you know, I, I went home and told my wife, I'm going to look like a genius because these kids are bad at science because they're not doing any. Um, and just by giving them the opportunity to do this, uh, to design an experiment and to do it to a high level, just like you would do in any other setting, these students then went on to compete at, at um, sci international science fairs. They were winning, getting scholarships, doing great things. Um, and, a, and a little inspiration story of how this pathway really form, formalized itself. Uh, we support the uh, Houston Science and Engineering Fair uh, downtown. And we were, we were judging two years ago and we're going through and there's this, these three, three girls from I think Pasadena, one of the Pasadena middle schools. Um, and they had put together a, a research project on growing seeds in a microgravity environment. So basically they built a, they put a bicycle wheel together um, and they were spinning the seeds to try and simulate a microgravity environment. And they did a really fantastic job for the resources they had. Uh, so I, I had no idea who the girls were, but we came back, they were one of our top winners, came back and asked them what, you know, how did you get inspired to do this? You know, what, what made you want to do this project? And all three of them said, they're like, oh, we went to this girl STEM thing at Space Center Houston, you know, a, a couple years ago. And then our teacher let us do this project. And, and that got me very excited. And so that, you know, that, that's like the test of does this path, pathway work? Can it have an impact on students? And the fact that those girls participated in a program and then made the decision to do more work by doing a scientific research project and ended up competing at a high level in the city of Houston was just exciting. So we wanna further this and, and give more students this opportunity. The last two sections here, Splashdown and Launchpad. Splashdown is that's the opportunity for the girls who have made the decision to enter the STEM pathway. This is where they can we give them uh, internship opportunities at Space Center Houston. They can apply for internship opportunities at NASA Johnson Space Center. Uh, and in addition to that, they can come back and be mentors for our elementary girls when they come back through, when we, when we have the opportunity for girls to start coming back. So this is the idea that this is, a, this is an ongoing experience and we're gonna build this community of, of STEM STEM rich students as we go forward. And then of course the ultimate goal is that they end up uh, working at Johnson Space Center and taking us to the to the moon and to Mars. So that that's the that's the gist of in a lot of detail for the girl STEM pathway. Um, and as I told uh, uh, Stokes, I, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about this stuff because this is my this is my passion and when I can share some more detail I love love the opportunity to do that. So if you have any interest or you know students who, who would love to participate in this program, this is an on-site, it's a live activity at Space Center Houston. We are doing our Space University Bridge program uh, in two weeks is when we're starting. So if you have, if you know girls who are eighth grade going into ninth grade or even ninth grade girls, um, that, that would be interested and have the capacity to get to Space Center Houston every day, we have this program open. Um, you can send, a, send an email to Katherine Walker. She's the coordinator of this program. Um, so we do have some openings and there is, uh, this program is made possible by the Boeing Corporation. So uh, we do have a few open spots, so we'd love to share this. Uh, even if you know some other groups out there, some schools that are close by or, or groups that are close by, please send us this because we really want to, we want to take advantage of this opportunity for, for the girls. Um, we've, we've got several of our girls who have participated in the other programs that are coming, but like I said, we have some spots open and I want to encourage, uh, encourage anyone who can to come and participate. It's a great way 
to move, you know, to move along that pathway. And when you think of students who are right for this, it doesn't necessarily have to be that girl that is convinced that she's going to be the next, uh, the next Ellen Ochoa and she's ready to go. It can be that girl, but it can also be that girl that's searching, that's looking for some something to be to belong to something to 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 move forward in their in their life with so just please share those with us we'll see what we can do i can't promise that that everybody gets in but it's pretty likely that we have some good opportunities there so if you let us know um we do have to move very quickly on this as we fill those extra spots so um, please reach out to uh to Catherine Walker at cwalker at spacecenter.org. And she can start getting you, getting the girls signed up and looking at those opportunities, making sure it fits, uh, that they'll fit within the program. So um, I just wanna put that opportunity out there to, to all of you. So the next pivot we did was our Space U program, which is our on-site one I was just talking about. We do an ap atmospheric research program. So this is where we launch hot air balloons, or not hot air balloons, we launch uh, high altitude balloons, weather balloons with experiments on them. So this summer, uh, we partnered with uh, an organization called Gear Up, which is out of Cal State Fullerton. And we brought this virtual STEM program to students in California. These are all underserved students in Orange County, California. Um, and what we had them do is we sent them experiments. So uh, Space Center Houston had the opportunity to fly a, a melanin radiation exper experiment on the International Space Station last year. And so we were able to recreate this experiment and give the students an opportunity to, uh, to build one of their own. And then they were allowed to design an experiment that we then flew on our high altitude balloons here in Houston. Um, students shipped, we shipped stuff back and forth to each other. Uh, we were able to put the, put the payloads all on our, on our balloon. We launched the balloon two weeks ago and we got up to 98,278 feet. Uh, very exciting. Uh, we were able to recover our payloads from a very, a very um, generous farmer out in, uh, out west of Houston. And you know, we were very excited to, to get that back and get the project sent back to the students. The message from Cal State was they run this program every summer and they usually get about 50% participation of the students who sign up to participate. Uh, with this specific program, they had over 80% of the students participate. Um, so students were able to pick up experiments, go back to their house, work on it at home, um, during our balloon launch, we did, you know, we did the whole play-by-play, -play, uh, similar to what you know NASA and the news, uh, the news media does, with like the Falcon 9 launch, um, and it was just an extraordinary experience. Now, the cool part about this is this program is now ready for market anywhere. We can work with any school system, any class, any extension program, and do the same thing. We can spread this out. This was a two week program. We can spread this out over a semester um, and really get some incredibly designed experiments that, that we could fly um, or we could do it in a, in a shorter period of time. So we're, we're excited for this innovation that came out of, you know, our came out of dealing with the pandemic and what we can do to engage students all over, you know, all over the US. And this is my favorite picture. So we do have cameras on our payloads and we've got our Space Center Houston flag, our little Lego astronaut. And then what, what's really exciting about this is we captured the moon in the shot. So it was very cool to get the moon captured. If you look just above the, the Space Center University flag, you can see the moon up there in the shot. So we were, we were excited about that image when we captured it. This was just a couple weeks ago that this went up. Another big thing we put together, and I was able to work uh, very closely with uh, Cindy MacArthur on this project, the Fox 26, uh, the Fox affiliate 26 sent a, 
had an opportunity, they were doing camp TV and they were doing it on the My 20 channel. And so we were able to work very closely with the um, Johnson Space Center Office of STEM Engagement uh, to put this together because we, we really looked, it needed to be done very, very, very quick. Um, we were able to move very quickly and um, through Cindy's help, we were, we were able to get some fantastic NASA resources engaged with this, but then we were able to work at our pace to, to make this happen. So I just want to share with you, this is just a sample of the TV show. So it was a half hour long TV show. We did four different episodes and um, this is just a little sample bit of it. It, it feels kind of, this is kind of like a commercial for the TV show. So just uh uh, bear with me there. Let me make sure I've got my uh, computer sound on. Okay, so you should be able to hear it. Welcome Space Explorers. Today's show is all about food. It takes a considerable team effort to make sure our astronauts are safe and healthy. NASA is currently working on returning to the moon with an eye towards deep space exploration. In the 19th century, the German scientist named Julius Wolf discovered that bones adapt when there's pressure put on them. And the scientists at Johnson Space Center have discovered amazing impacts that exercise has on your bone density and your bone strength. So by strengthening your muscles, you're strengthening your bones. Every time you lift some weights or you do that, it puts stress on your bones and then the osteoblasts build up your bones a little bit. They make them a little bit stronger. We bring the same divers that work with the astronauts at the Neutral Buoyancy Lab to come and train our guests. And after a short safety briefing on land, our future astronauts head into the pool to get used to the scuba equipment they will need to successfully complete their mission. I'll tell you, for about three days before my very first spacewalk, I was nervous. So I got out there, my very first spacewalk, I reached for the handrail outside the airlock. When I came out, my partner was Rick Linehan, my very first spacewalk. He had gone out first. He said, Mike, come on out. I floated out. I reached for the handrail that was in the pool, exactly right here, and there was a handrail right there on the space station. I'm out, and I see the next handrail that I always grabbed in the pool. It was right where I thought it was going to be, supposed to be. And it just felt like, hey, I'm just back in the pool. This feels like everyday training, you know, and everything is where I expected it to be. And when you're on orbit and you're looking at this beautiful planet, and then you look beyond to the vast blackness of space, it really hits home that, yeah, this is indeed our one jewel of a planet. Before you answer that, we want you to try this at home. We hope you enjoyed learning about the science behind space food. We want to thank our friends at NASA Johnson Space Center for all they do to support our mission. That's all the time we have for today. We hope you enjoyed today's show, and we'll see you next time on Explorer Camp TV. Welcome. So the, uh, the Explorer Camp TV program is specifically designed to try to reach those offline learners. Um, the four episodes that we were able to put together in our close work with uh, Johnson Space Center's Office of STEM Engagement has, uh, has allowed us to put together some ideas that we can help the education system reach those students who don't have internet, um, who don't really have access if they have to learn from home. So using a TV show is one way to do that. Uh, and we're currently working with uh, Boys and Girls Clubs and a couple other schools around the region on ways that we can directly impact those students who don't have access at home to virtual learning. So that, that's what came out of this great opportunity has, has it really has enhanced our skills and our, um, our teamwork with Johnson Space Center to deliver these opportunities to students, uh, students who may not have a computer in front of them.
or a, or a phone. So that, that was an exciting development. So another virtual program we have is the Human Performance Accelerator Lab. So this is the idea of where we're putting opportunities out there for the public to, uh, to build leadership skills. So we're, we're basically working on an idea to do that human performance, uh, the human performance and teamwork that goes into training. And then how do you apply that to life uh, out in, um, you know, out in the, uh, in the, the, the commercial sector. So we've got two different types of programming we offer. We offer a seminar, which is a 60 to 70 minute session. And then we have a workshop, which is a 90 to, uh, you know, maybe an hour and a half to two hours work. Um, we've got, we're going to have one of these opening up. Uh, it'll be an open call uh, that will happen uh, in August. So watch for that programming. Um, they're, they're more than just a sit and get type experience. So we're really proud of what we've done with this. We've done two of these already. We've done one with uh, a, um, a pretty exclusive executive leadership training group. And we've got, you know, fantastic reviews with that. And then we did another one for a, a Fortune 500 company who is developing their uh, diverse STEM, their diverse uh, suppliers network. And we work directly with the CEOs of those companies um, in, a, in a webinar like this as part of their master series. So I just want to put this out there too, that we, uh, we offer these. We've got several proposals out to different organizations and groups to continue taking that, you know, the knowledge and experience of NASA that we've learned over, you know, over the past few years, all of all that space exploration knowledge and put it into how people can survive and adapt in their companies now. So that's a great opportunity we have that's brand new. And, and you'll see a lot more about this in the next, uh, next month. Uh, we'll have quite a bit rolling out about this program. So here's our virtual events. And I just put these dates up there so you can be aware. Uh, if you follow the website, you can get all these events lined out. We've got... Uh, our virtual campout dates are happening, you know, August 22nd, which already, um, August 22nd, we've got one September 12th, and we've got one October 17th. Our thought leader series is coming out on July 30th, so watch for that. Um, our monthly, monthly member mornings, we do some events. The first one will be August 8th, uh, and these sensory friendly events are going to be on site. And then our homeschool day will be on site also. So these are actually we're at, we're able to do because we are open. Um, one other virtual program I want to tell you about was we did a uh, we had an opportunity to work with the National Federation of the Blind and their big national conference, and we designed um, virtual tours for the National Federation of the Blind of Space Center Houston. Um, it was extraordinary. We have a fantastic, uh, fantastic team who works specifically with, uh, with um, accessibility issues. And they, I mean, it was a pretty incredible experience. So that's another piece of innovation that we've made in ways that we can serve, you know, uh, folks with disabilities and, and help give them the opportunity to experience space exploration also in this virtual world, which is, I was, I was amazed at the program and how well it was received and, and how well it worked. So we're excited to have those big national partnerships so that we can deliver this, whether it's to an education system or to just our local guests here. And in development right now, these are programs we're developing. We've got virtual field trips. Uh, this is ways that we can serve the schools uh, so if they can't go on a field trip, we can we can walk them through a tour. We've got our virtual STEM academies. So these are ways we can help deliver um, science content virtually if students need it. Um, we've got try at home activities. We're working on a virtual Space U program similar to that atmospheric balloon program. And then also professional development, not only for educators, but also for those new homeschool parents that are going to be out there, you know, all, all throughout the United States. So we're 
we're excited to work with these new programs as we develop them. So now the exciting news, and let me take a big drink of water and I'll wrap up here pretty quick and take your questions, but we are now open and it's been a long time coming. Well, since uh, we closed down in March and we're happy we're open now, we had uh, July 17th and 18th, we did member days. And then July 19th, we were open to the public. I'm happy to say we've gotten great response from the public. Um, it is a very important time for Space Center Houston. We do need the attendance to, uh, to um, you know, help us continue to offer this amazing service. Uh, one thing I do have to say is that our success over the last, uh, last four to five years has really helped us weather this storm. So by putting, you know, by, by having such tremendous success, great attendance, we've been able to, um, to treat our staff extremely well, um, to take care of our crew and families. And, and now it gives us the opportunity to open up and do better than we've ever done before. So I wanna start with a, a clip, a news clip. Some of you may have seen some of these out there, but this describes our reopening and then I'll go through a few of the details for you, and then I'll be able to answer some questions. As of today, Space Center Houston is back open and on a new mission. Fox 26's Chelsea Edwards gives us a look at some of the new exhibits with safety in mind. The highly anticipated reopening of Space Center Houston is now all systems go. <laughs> After being closed for months because of the pandemic, the nonprofit attraction has new experiences and exhibits, allowing limited numbers through the gates with new guidelines. Limited capacity and timed tickets. So you can pick a day and time for when you come so that we can control the, the pulse and the, the flow of our guest journey. But the safety starts before you blast off from home. T minus 10. First, they'd like you to download the free Space Center app that gives audio tours, maps, and selfie filters, plus a virtual boarding pass for the tram. Nine. Get your timed tickets online. Eight. Leave prohibited items at home. Seven. Visors down. Ages two and up must wear a mask. Six. Check in. Five. Head through security. Four. Snap a picture. Clean your hands, scan your tickets, and start your mission. We have a ton of, of indoor space to space out. And then we also have a lot of outdoor spaces, including our new Falcon 9 SpaceX rocket. New features also include a pop-up exhibit with NASA creations to combat COVID-19 and a celebration of the 50th anniversary of Apollo 13. We have authentic artifacts uh, related to the mission. You can see the real carbon dioxide scrubber that saved the astronauts' lives. Visit fox26houston.com for more or when you're ready for liftoff. At Space Center Houston, Chelsea Edwards, Fox 26 News. So we're excited to be reopened and part of being reopened is our camps. So we were able to reopen our camps and instead of taking a, uh, you know, a, a kind of a, a fear approach to this, we took, how can we turn this and make this positive? How can we make this an authentic learning experience for our students? So we took the idea of operating clean room camps. Um, scientists and engineers work in clean rooms all over the world all the time. So why can't we create that authentic experience for our students, which not only keeps our crew safe and, and uh, free of, of exposure or limited exposure, it also keeps the, the students free of, well, not free, but, um, it, it minimizes the chance for exposure. So we're, we're happy to put these together. We put a lot of work in developing these programs. Um, we basically, the way we present it is we do a webinar with parents before their students come. We explain what goes on in a clean room and then what we're doing to apply that in our environment at Space Center Houston. Uh, the students arrive, they, there's, touchless check-in. So basically the parents don't even get out of the car. Uh, the students come up, they wash their hands, they don their clean room gear, they go into the session and then they go to work and do, um, do all the extraordinary authentic activities that we have designed for them 
in a, in a normal setting. Um, so they do have to don and doff their gear. We, um, we definitely, you know, we disinfect every day. We take every step possible. We go beyond the, the CDC guidelines to help keep these programs, these programs and the students safe. I think the, the neatest thing I've seen with this is we had, um, we've had six year olds up to 11 year olds with this. And, and as you watch them, we're really teaching the students how to social distance, how to, you know, how do you work with a mask on? How can you be prepared for school? So we're, we're excited that students um, get to have this learning experience. Uh, we've gotten great response from the parents um, and we're, we're excited to continue offering these opportunities. So we still have, um, we've got plenty of openings. We are running at a lower capacity than normal, but we have plenty of openings for the next three weeks. So we have three weeks of experiences coming up and you know, we'd love to have more, we'd love to have some more students in and, and get to participate and experience it. This, this, uh, this really, it's really a fun way to do science learning in a challenging environment. Um, the next piece is the Space Center University. And this is the, this is what the Girls STEM program will look like. So if students participate in Girls STEM, the, the pathway opportunity I presented to you, uh, there's two ways they can they can pay to participate or they can be part of uh, if they if they qualify for the uh, for the Boeing grant to to participate in this experience but we were able to bring our space U program along so we have programming available for students from ages 6 to 18 um, and they're ongoing for the next three weeks for our younger students and then for students ages 11 to 18 that goes on all throughout the year. So they can join and participate anytime later throughout the year. Uh, so we're, we're excited to continue to offer this. I'm extraordinarily proud of the team of how hard they worked to put together this, this experience and make it authentic. And then really teach the students why you operate in a clean room. And the idea that you are the contaminant. So you don't wanna contaminate that spacecraft. And, and that really translates into the, the core message behind the keeping people safe with, uh, with the, the pandemic at this time. As you go through and experience Space Center Houston, you pick your role. You can be an astronaut, a mission controller, a science officer, or an engineer. Um, as, you, as you look at each of the exhibits, we describe more of what those jobs are. And, and so this is part of the experience, the new guest experience. Come see the Falcon 9 rocket. You know, this was the first, uh, this was the first Falcon 9 to fly, to launch a, a payload to the International Space Station, land, be refurbished, sent up and launch another payload and land again. So it is a historic rocket and we're proud to have it here and we're proud that the public gets to see it now. Um, even in our photo opportunities, we tried to make them as authentic, so we don't allow people to take their masks off, but they can take pictures in a in a clean room background when they when they take their photos in front of the green screen. So we're trying to make it as positive and as authentic as, as possible. We have new food service, so it's basically grab and go. Um, we're not doing we don't have the zero G diner open at this point, um, but it's all grab and go opportunity. So if you do need lunch, you can go to the gift shop and purchase. Uh, purchase a grab and go lunch. Um, one of the other things we put together is this uh, mission control the spread exhibit. So we designed an exhibit that focuses on the science behind the, the COVID virus and then the innovations that NASA has been working on to control the spread. Um, one of them that's highlighted here is a, uh, a 3D printed necklace that was designed out of JPL that um, warns you as soon as your hands come up, it keeps you from touching your face. So it gives you a warning, it gives a little vibration. So there's several of these examples. We have four different artifacts that are part of this exhibit. And then we are also providing this exhibit to other NASA visitor centers as, um, as a contribution to the greater good to, to put out there in, in the United States. 
We do require social distancing and masks. We, our crew has been the number one concern. So how do we keep our staff safe in this environment while allowing the public to return to our venue? Um, I think I'll go ahead and, and stop there. I want to, uh, to just leave this, uh, leave my contact information here for both of you, for, for all of you. Um, you can email me, but I, I highly recommend that you include Noemi Norrell, who's on this, this uh, webinar with me. Um, she definitely helps, uh, helps make sure that, that your messages get to the top of my, top of my inbox. So please reach out to either one of us. If you know of a school or a program or, or something you, you think uh, we could help with. Um, also, we're happy to happy to answer any questions with you if there's any other further involvement you'd like to do. Um, and again, I just want to say thank you so much for your support for all the students in the greater Houston area and and really giving some of those kids who who don't ever have a chance to experience such awe and wonder as, as space exploration offers. And, and once we open that door, it, you know, it changes lives. So all the work you've done, the support you've given has given us the opportunity to, to be innovative in education and really tackle these challenging times. So I'll go ahead and stop there and open it up for questions. If anyone has any questions for me, I can go back and forth and talk about any of the slides again if you need to. Well, thank you very much, Daniel. That was great presentation, and I'm I was really impressed with everything that Space Center Houston is doing during this time. And I tell you, uh, everyone listening, I have personal experience with this. My five-year-old granddaughter went to a couple of programs, and she loved it. Just absolutely loved it. Daniel, one question I have is, how are you spreading the word about all of these wonderful activities? So we are, um, we, we have a, a marketing plan. So we are doing uh, social media. One of, the, one of the challenges we've had with reopening is uh, when is it appropriate? So, you know, as, as cases were climbing in Houston, um, we had to make a decision of, of when do we open, how do we open. We believe our innovations are, are you know, right in line with CDC guidelines, state guidelines, and local guidelines. So when we opened this last week, we didn't do a big giant media push, um, but we are letting people know. And now you're going to start seeing some more commercials out there. You'll start seeing billboards, things like that pop up with us. Um, our education programs, uh, we're currently working with direct, basically it's direct communication with some of the school districts um, with that idea, but we are reaching out to other organizations to spread that word. So. Dan, this is Bill Engelhoff. Um, since uh, Bill started off the uh, presentation here with a discussion about our donations and the money that we contribute, obviously we've, uh, as of now, contributed a fair uh, um, amount of money uh, to the worthy cause that, that you guys are, are uh, executing over there. But in the coronavirus environment here where your in-person attendance obviously has been restricted, um, how are you reprogramming, say, from a budgetary standpoint, shifting money from, say, supporting or subsidizing in-person attendance by students to funding your uh, virtual programs? Are you, are you making a significant budgetary shift, or is that money in pots that you can't distribute from one to the other? How's that working? Yeah, so basically, for, for example, like our, our Girl STEM Pathway experience, um, that, that's kind of a good way to couch it. So this is, we, do, we don't just do this with girls. This is a, this is a specific program. But um, so like, for example, this one, I'll use this example. Um, Boeing's been very supportive with us. So, you know, the minute we saw things changed, we communicate directly with the donor if it's a grant program. 
and see what they're willing, what they what they're willing to let us adjust. And everybody we've worked with has been extraordinary, you know, and, and very helpful with that. So we've been able to put, um, we've been able to put, you know, shift some of our funding that would be for kids coming in the door for staff to develop the online program, pay for the online platform, send kits to the schools or to the students to participate. So we've been able to make some of those shifts as we as we've gone along through it. So it's really about shifting our shifting our budget to where we're still serving the goals of of the of the donation, but we're just doing it in a different way now. Um, and so that's that's what we focused on because our our goal is to impact and serve as many students as we possibly can, especially now, and and being able to, um, you know send us a, a stem packet to a kid or work with them in a in a zoom room you know and sometimes this has to be after hours it has to be um we have to be creative in our environment um, some of it is like the development of the tv show how do we do you know better video assets that can reach students uh like in the boys and girls clubs or in, in other school systems. So that's what we've been able to do. Uh, we do have some restricted funds that that are that are staying there, but you know, a lot of it we've been able to be very flexible. And it, you know, it comes down to uh, the flexibility of the donors and how willing, you know, how willing they are to let us move uh, move different support around. It really doesn't change who we support, it just changes how we're how we're how we're supporting. That answers your question. How big is your staff, Daniel? My staff is the, the report to me. I think we've got 61 full and part time educators. Um, so we're, you know, we're kind of at that point now where we're, we don't have quite as many part time hours for some of our part time staff, uh, but we've got 19 full time staff members in education. And then overall Space Center Houston is, you know, about 350, but that number is varying quite a bit because with, with lower attendance, we, you know, we, we have less, less staffing needs. Um, so that, that's where we're at. So your 61 is not furloughed. You're able to retain those. Yep. So over the, over the, um, over the pandemic period, uh, because we were in such good position when we entered this, which is a lot better than a lot of museums, we were able to keep staff on, on board. I know our whole education team uh, was working from home. So we made a major shift. Uh, we made sure everybody had computers. We did a lot of this virtual transition. We did quite a bit of um, um, curriculum development systems. We cleaned up some of our systems. So we were working this, this full time, but we also, you know, were a recipient of a, of a PPP loan, which helped tremendously in this process to keep our staff engaged. But, you know, we're in that point now that, you know, there may be furloughs in the future. You know, we don't know. We have to look at the numbers. It all depends on the attendance now that we're open. So, you know, that, that'll be the attendance now is going to be the big guideline as we go forward because we're um, we're uh, we're in that position now where we've we've got to start looking at, at those hard at those hard decisions. But you know, I, I I can speak from two two perspectives here as a as an executive at Space Center Houston. Our primary goal has been taking care of the crew, keeping it intact, so that we can serve and tell this story better, and then. You know, as a as an employee, you know, I've definitely felt that we've been we've been treated extremely well. Um, we have had to make cuts. We've had to do some different shifts, but it's all been for what's best for Space Center Houston, and then what's best for telling the story to the public. So. What about homeschooling? Are you seeing any trends there? <laughs> yes. Well, I, I will say, are we seeing trends? We haven't seen the results of those trends, but we're paying very close attention to that. We are designing programs specifically for homeschool families as they return. 
and you know, I think I'll be able to answer that question uh, uh, in September, and I'll be able to answer it very well. So we are taking the pre, you know, uh, we're assuming that there is going to be a lot more homeschooling um, families out there. So that's part of the virtual academies that we'll build to where we can deliver um, standards-based science lessons directly to students and they can sign up for this opportunity and, and do it in a safe way if they want to be at home. And then possibly pair that with on-site activities if they're, if they're willing to make that happen. Yeah, I was wondering, how does your virtual camp out work at night? Do you have it at night and do you say, you know, look up at the stars and identify and talk about the stars? Yep, that's exactly what we do. So we do have them at night. Um, we, we give, what we try to do is give the participants multiple ways to experience a planetarium show. You know, we encourage them if you've got a telescope and binoculars and you're, you know, everything's not washed out with light pollution that you can go outside and view. It's part of where we encourage them to use an app, which gives you the ability to experience and see everything virtually. And then uh, we have a live, um, a live educator there that walks them through a, a show. So we'll do a pre-designed planetarium show, which gets them into you know, more specifics where we can like fly into Saturn and look at the structure of the rings or we can do some different pieces with that. So we do do it live at night and it, it, it's really trying to find that way that multiple people can access the experience um, regardless of what their limitations are at home. Daniel, this is Bob Wren. Now, you have an excellent presentation, and we really appreciate it. And under the trying circumstances uh, that you're working under, you're doing a great job, and we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Hey, Daniel. Hey, Daniel. Hey, Daniel. I just want to say I really, really like the idea that you've got with the uh, doing the, um, the clean room thing. That is really cool. Yeah, those are, um, I was really proud of the team as they put those together. Cause it, uh, Can, is, are you going to open that up to where you could do some training for adults in that sort of situation? You know, I think we need to, um, right now we're open to anything. So yeah. we might, yeah. we might put that out there. Yep. That's a, that's a good idea. Yeah, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, Daniel, thank you so much. It's been a really educational program for us, and I, I think uh, definitely gave me a bunch of things I'm going to look into for my granddaughter and and, and other other kids that I know would benefit from these programs. All right. Well, great. Well, thank you. I just want to say thank you to everyone. And I appreciate the opportunity to, to share this. Um, if there's other groups that you think would benefit from, from hearing about Space Center Houston, just let us know. We've, we've got a team of us that can talk about these, these experiences. And, you know, we definitely appreciate all your support. Um, and we're, 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 you know, we're excited for the school year. You know, we're nervous and excited, but we're gonna, we're gonna do all we can to support the school systems. And, and I just want to reiterate that, you know, whatever you can do to su support teachers, administrators, those local folks right now as they, as they make these hard decisions, I think that that's good. Even, even just encouraging words are are powerful when when they hear that because it's definitely a stressful time so just want to say thank you thank and i appreciate the opportunity and please reach out to us and um we'll we'll get back to you on any anything we can do okay hey thanks uh thanks again daniel and uh
you know, I was also just going to mention, you know, we were going to do the space settlement design competition. I think uh, there, I know some things happened on that, but we're, we ran it in a virtual mode and I'm just getting set up right now to run the international space settlement design competition all over the world using uh, Discord and Zoom and whatever other Google Docs and all sorts of tools. And for everybody watching, I'd like to invite you to tune in again in two weeks. Uh, we'll have our first Thursday program with uh, Kathy Sullivan, you know, former astronaut, former administrator of NOAA. Uh, she's going to give, a, I think, a fascinating presentation on comparing her recent trip to the depths of the sea uh, with her EVA's experience. Talk about the differences and the similarities of those two. But, should be at, I think, 2.30, uh, two weeks from today. Right. Yep. And I'll have that plan to set up as well. So uh, we'll see you then. Okay, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Daniel, thank you for uh, your presentation. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay. So I guess we're signing off. See you in two weeks. Yep. Sign off. <laughs>